Tom Wistersill, the Big Sky Conference Commissioner, one of the 12 members on the NCA Selection Committee. Um, first things first, Commissioner, uh, are, are you ready to be done with this whole selection process? Because I do know how much time you pour into this. Yeah, a lot of work done, um, a lot of good work. It is a uh, uh, a passion to, uh, to you have to embrace. Uh, the selection process is uh, a tremendous amount of work. I mean, 14, 16 hour days there for five straight days. So um, it was good to get home for a quick 24 hours. And then uh, I had to Spokane as the site rep for the teams uh, up there. But uh, but yeah, good to be down with the selection process and really excited to get the games going. What can you tell me about Boise State and how you guys place them in Dayton, Ohio. This is a team that, you know, 22 and 10 in a Mountain West Conference that, you know, many perceive to be to be loaded this year. Uh, a six-bid league, six quad one wins, I believe tied for 14th most in the country. And, uh, you know, they they swept a five seed in, in San Diego State. They beat St. Mary's. How, how did Boise State wind up in, in Dayton, Ohio in the first four? Yeah, I think, you know, from the Boise State standpoint, it's easy to kind of, look at them in a silo and say, you know, here's the things they did. Here's the things they didn't do. You know, I think there's a couple factors there. First is the way the teams enter the field is they get voted in by the committee each step along the way. And the way you get voted into the field is kind of the way you first appear on the seed list. And so, you know, I don't remember exactly what seed line they got voted in at, but it's not like it's just taken as, uh, Boise State is this compared to the, the field when they get seated. It's more like they enter the field and get seated to start uh, based upon when they get voted in. Then once they get voted in, then we start sorting the teams based upon kind of who they're compared against on their seed line. Um, and teams can move up or down on their seed line based upon a number of factors. And so, you know, I think for a couple of things for Boise, I think um, they had did have a good quad one wins the majority of them were against their own conference opponents. And so it's not that that hurts them, but it's hard to have that help them because they're all being taken into account against each other, you know? And so that win against San Diego state is, is against a, a, a loss to San Diego state. Um, and so that doesn't necessarily help them as much. Whereas the non-conference games, yeah, the St. Mary's win helps them, but you know, there's some losses in there to Clemson and uh, Washington state, if I remember correctly, that um, that kind of hurt them then. And so, you know, it's not like they 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 started in at the, they didn't start in as a six seed and then get moved down to, to Dayton. Um, where they entered and who they're compared against, there's a lot of factors that go into that. And then and then it's a matter of, okay, as we as we settle down into those last four slots, does their res how does their resume match up next to the team that's above them or the team that's above them? And are there tw there's 12 people in the room and you need to have, you know, nine of 12 votes to move up. And uh, so when those votes happen and discussions happen, it's hard to get teams to move a lot there because different people look at things through their own lens. And uh, with 12 people voting, uh, someone might feel strongly about something, but uh, but one vote doesn't carry the day. If you look at how the Mountain West Conference tournament played out, do you feel like that might have impacted Boise State seeding as well? I know that a lot of this work is done when you guys arrive on on Wednesday, which is really when the Mountain West Conference Tournament tips off last week. So did, did New Mexico winning the Mountain West Conference Tournament create a scenario that might have bumped Boise State down any seed lines? Yeah, it's hard to tell. I mean, I, there's no definitive yes or no to that. Certainly, we're watching games while we're in Indy. If some of the 12 members were trying in their minds to sort out where the Mountain West was at, maybe there's some of that, you know, kind of recency bias, I guess. But, I, you know, everybody's kind of looking at the full body of work. And so, you know, as the people I've talked to from the Mountain West Conference in the last day and a half, from, from Gloria, the commissioner, to some of the coaches, the message I've given them is obviously your conference finish is important. Um, your quad one victories outside of the conference are probably the most important factor when you're comparing team A to team B and mm -hmm. pick any random teams. Cause that's, you don't know who you're going to be compared against. So anything you can do with your resume in that non-conference piece, when it comes down to splitting hairs, 
which you're doing on a lot of these decisions and site lines and seed lines, um, that that's probably the most important fact. Tom, I, I want to make one thing clear. Like I know that you um, were assigned to the Mountain West Conference. I know that you also aren't the sole vote of how Mountain, Mountain West Conference teams are judged. With all that being said, I am curious your take on like the WCC, for example. And yeah, uh, Gonzaga had a win over a net 18 Kentucky while two Mountain West teams beat net 11 Creighton. You look at St. Mary's uh, non-conference schedule and a lot of their work was done against teams from the Mountain West Conference. And so it seems like a, a program like St. Mary's is getting credit for what they did against the Mountain West Conference. However, it might be kind of being held against Mountain West teams for doing a lot of their damage inside of league play. So I, I'm just kind of curious your take on the, the WCC getting two five seeds, yet the Mountain West only getting one seed above eight, despite having six teams you know, from their league being in the NCAA tournament, if that kind of makes sense, I believe. Yeah, I can I can see where you're going there, Jay, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I think what you're what you're saying is factually correct. So that I followed you on all that. Uh, to me, the way I looked at that was to me the West Coast Conference was very top heavy. You had, you had two really good teams, right? And and I think the Mountain West was not top heavy. The Mountain West was really good across uh, lots of teams. Mm -hmm. So so in some ways, those six teams kind of hurt each other than because they're all being compared against each other and, and, and their wins and losses within the league, along with the non-conference. Whereas the, those, the, the West Coast Conference powers, they're going to have those, those wins against each other, and then they play for the title game, and then they're going to have a bunch of wins in the conference. So, so it's a little bit apples to oranges there because those conferences we looked at, you know, and again, we're not really comparing conferences to conferences. We're comparing those two teams, which are very dominant, to six teams in the Mountain West, which we all thought were very good, but none of them dominant. Did New Mexico have to win the uh, Mountain West tournament in in your eyes to to make it into the field of sixty eight? I honestly I don't know because okay. what happened was once they got in, then our focus shifted to kind of a group of eight that was fighting for those last couple of spots in. And so I don't know had they lost in like the semifinals and and they would have fallen into that list. I don't know how they would have sorted out because then they would have been compared against each of those teams one to one mm -hmm. in that in that group. And, uh, you know, I mean, the nice thing is they solved it by winning. So they didn't have to get compared to that group. But it's hard to pinpoint whether whether that determined their fate or not. You look at a school like Colorado State, who they were in the top 25, if not a majority of the season, darn near close to a majority of the season. And um, they wind up in, in Dayton, Ohio as, as well. So uh, just curious, your, your take on that. And have you ever seen the Mountain West so competitive yet hard to separate uh, because of that, I guess? Yeah, the Colorado State angle, I think, you know, from the committee discussion, you know, if I remember correctly, they were the seven seed in the Mountain West Conference. They were. So I think, you know, they, the, while they had a couple of really good wins, you know, in the non-conference, they beat Creighton, uh, for example, right? So then you're like, okay, how do you take a look at the seventh place team from a conference like that and, mm -hmm. and then try to sort them out? And so that leads to your, the answer to your second question is the depth and strength of the Mountain West help them get six teams in, but I think it hurt them from the seed line perspective. That's why your West Coast example is a great, great question, Jay, because when those two teams can stock up, uh, you know, really good, not only, not only lots of wins, so their totals look good, but then they have a couple of non-conference wins each, which help, um, then, then that's how they end up higher on the seed line. Tom, I've asked you this before, um, but again, I, I do want to ask you it again, because I think that, you know, social media, there are opinions that run wild. How does previous tournament history play into what you guys decided to do this year in terms of, um, you know, seeding teams? And just to add to that, it, it kind of goes both ways for Boise State, because you can judge them off the fact that they've never won an NCAA tournament game. They're 0-9 all time. I think there's also people that are saying like in 2015, it feels like the committee owes them one because they assigned them to play Dayton in a true road game in the NCAA tournament, which is 
a complete anomaly as this setup goes. So um, your take on how previous history dictates the decisions that you make in 2024. Previous history has nothing to do with it. It, it. it never comes up. Quite frankly, I didn't know Boise State never won a tournament game until yesterday, uh, on Monday. So um, it's never discussed. Uh, now, saying that, d- does everybody in the room know that San Diego State made the Final Four last year? Absolutely. Um, does that does that affect the way you vote? I can't speak for the other people. Um, it doesn't affect the way I vote. Because it's a different team. Everybody has a different team. Sure, there's some of the same players. Um, but you're purely looking at a team's resume from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And it's hard to stress to people that that game in November matters. But it, I can tell you it absolutely matters. Every bit of it does. Your That win on November 17th is every bit as important as your game on March 10th. And that's hard for people because the teams sometimes aren't the same. Players get better, players get worse, coaches coach better, uh, you know, things happen, right? But um, but every game matters. But to the answer to your question, Jay, last year's tournament, 10 years ago, history, no, no, no play in it at all. Tom, how much time do you think you poured into this process? And you're, you're in year two of a five-year um, stint that you get to be a part of this 12-member 12, 12 selection committee. But th- this season alone, on top of being, you know, the, the Big Sky Conference Commissioner, how much time do you think you poured into, you know, being a member of the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee? I'd say well over a thousand hours this basketball season. And and I'm just trying to do some quick math, but you know, that's counting 16 hours a day from <clears throat> from Wednesday to uh to Sunday night in Indy together as a group. But you know, you it this means so much to so many people that you want to do right by them. So you you mentioned a little bit earlier, it takes nine out of 12 votes to move a team from a seed line. What is your role in um, providing information about the Mountain West Conference? And just to reiterate, it's not like you have the sole vote, sole vote of how to place teams out of the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, so there's two people assigned to every conference. And one of my conferences is the Mountain West for the second year in a row. So obviously not only do I watch more Mountain West than pretty much anybody else does, in that room, my job is to answer questions about the Mountain West, about the way teams have played. How would they, Tom, how do you think this team would play in the NCAA tournament? Um, what injuries happened during the season that affected outcomes? Hey, Tom, who did? how many times did you get a chance to watch Colorado State play or Boise State play? Tell us about that team. Uh, what do they do? What do they do well? You know, those types of things. So I answer a lot of questions. I'm not there to advocate. I'm not there to say, hey, we really need to vote Boise State here or Utah State here. That's not my role. My role is to provide information, data, and then my own feelings. Because, you know, with without that, we wouldn't need people in the room. We just have a computer spit out the uh, the bracket. So, you know, we do base it upon what we see, whether it's in person or on TV as well. I know that, you know, this, this might be a tough one to, to kind of figure out or, or answer here, but when it comes to where Boise State was placed, you know, I was in the room, there, it seemed like a lot of people were shocked. Mark Few, the head coach at Gonzaga, said that he felt like Boise State, you know, to, to paraphrase, was underseated. Let's just say that. What do, what do you think? What is your feeling on, on how this, uh, you know, shook out for Boise State? Again, a, a team with six quad one wins, uh, beat St. Mary's, beat, you know, swept San Diego State, beat, had two wins over New Mexico. Um, I could kind of go on here, obviously. Everybody's got yeah. their own NCAA tournament resumes, but what what is your take on on the shakeout for Boise State winding up in the first four? Kind of kind of two things from that perspective. First of all, last year we had zero bid stealers. And in the previous uh, five years, they said we've had three total, I think was mm-hmm. the number. This year we had five. So it cre- it moved everyone down the seed line because there were no teams left that kind of like, boy, these teams really deserve, you know, don't deserve to get in. Last year when we had zero bid stealers, there were a number of teams that got in at the end whose resumes just weren't real good. Mm-hmm. This year, we had about eight teams left for that last spot and they all deserve to get in. And so, and Boise was already in the tournament by then. So it was, we knew that not only would there be a bunch of teams with really good resumes that didn't make it, 
but there would be a bunch of teams whose seed weren't as good as they probably should have been or would have been in years past. So that's why you have these really good teams looking like they barely got in the tournament because there are eight other teams who would kill to be playing in Dayton today or tomorrow. And so, so that that's number one. Number two is I expect coaches to stick up for each other. The Mike few, Mark few comment, they're going to say that right about each other. And then now it's a great opportunity for the team to focus in and, and, and prove everybody wrong that they didn't deserve to be there. They get an opportunity to play an opponent that, you know, that they have a chance to beat in Colorado. And, uh, and now let's go play the game and see who's better. So, so that, I think it's a, the, all those factors at the beginning part played a role at certainly in a team like Boise and up in Dayton. That is the beauty of the NCAA tournament. If you get an invite, you get a chance to, to prove any doubter wrong. Tom, I really hope you get a chance to enjoy, enjoy the NCAA tournament now. <laughs> Well, now the fun part begins, Jay, to be around the players and the coaches and the games. And uh, it's the greatest three weeks in sports, and I'm excited to be a part of it. We appreciate you, Tom. No problem, Jay. Thank you.